A very good morning and welcome to The Nation. You're here with me, Tamina Kausji, in our studios here at Banama. And today we have with us some experts from the hotel and hospitality industry to speak to us about the condition of the industry in Malaysia today, as well as share with us some insights about what is it like really to be a hotelier in Malaysia. So, welcome to the studio, Puan Yani. Hi, good morning. Good morning. So, Puan Yani is actually the Director of Sales at The Legend. Now, before we start with um, talking about the issues <coughs> that we're going to discuss, could you tell us a little bit about your professional background in the hotel industry? Okay, I started a job uh, as a hotelier when I was 18 years old. All right, okay. Yeah. I started from the beginning as a junior waitress mm -hmm. and I climbed up the ladder become a front office assistant from department to department right uh, for 20 years all right yeah. okay and, and now i'm with the legend resort Chirating in pahang have you been to Chirating? yes i have but many years ago uh, okay it's a very nice resort um, nearby the beach and we have a private beach about 1.5 kilometers all oh, right yes. i see mm -hmm. okay sounds lovely <coughs> so you're currently the director of sales at the legend Chirating. exactly yeah. okay now, usually we understand what most viewers might understand what director of sales means in the context of a company, for example, a traditional marketing company. Mm -hmm. In the aspect of the hospitality industry, can you tell us about your daily duties and your job scope? Okay. As a director of sales, we have to ensure that uh, we achieve a target that we are budgeted every year. Right. So we do a market segmentation I see. from a different, different market. As, uh, as Example like uh, we have a government market, okay. we have a travel agent, when we also have a legend. For legend charting, we have a few types of uh, segmentation. Right. And now we are targeting mostly about leisure market. I see, leisure market yep. now also. So before we move on, let's look into the distinction between the two main types of hotels. We've yep. got city hotels and we've got resort hotels. Right. Can you tell us what the difference is? Okay, the different city hotels that they went for city hotel because of the business trips. Right. Yeah, or because of this convention, seminars or holidays. Okay, for short the resort, trips. Yeah, short trips. For the resort normally, they went there for the relax and unwind. Right, of Yeah, course. because of the uh, experience, you know, they want to be there to release their stress. Right. And of course, they need a different, different product. Maybe they like, they love forests and they will go into the uh, resort, you know. Right, ecotourism Yeah, ecotourism maybe. maybe, yeah. And for the beach, you know, we we do have a sport, beach activities and all that. Right, you know, volleyball, etc. Yeah, volleyball, banana boats and all that, yeah. Right, right, okay. So basically, um, your hotel <coughs> is a resort hotel. Exactly. Yeah. So who formed the main backbone of your clientele? Uh, you mean that? Yes, the main people The who main come. people, yeah. We do have a preferred business partner like a travel agent. Right. So we work closely with them. And of course, Tourism Asia is a very supportive to our industry. Right. So we work closely with them and we travel abroad to market our properties. So of course, that um, the contract rate given to them right. to support us. Okay. Yeah. Right. In terms of government support, <coughs> if they want to do a seminar packages and all that during weekdays, right. So we also offer them a package. I see. For their um, team buildings, for their workshops. Right. Okay. Yep. Tell us a little bit about, for example, the team building clients mm -hmm. who come down to yeah. the legend. Okay. Team building. We do have a facilities nearby the beach, right. Whereby that people can do indoor and outdoor. I see. Yeah, in the city hotels, normally they do indoor, but in resorts, they can unwind, they can more relax and... Yes, you have you know, the space. They have the a space, you know, they can yes. think, maybe uh, they can do better. Right. Right? Uh, so, example that, uh, let's say they have three days, two night package. Okay. So, maybe uh, one day will be indoor right. to go to their tourists and all that, and they do a team building outside the resort. Ah, yeah. I see. So the whole day is packed with scheduled exactly. activities. Mm -hmm. I see, yep. I see. All right. Interesting. Now, let's move on to some general comments about <coughs> what do you think is the state of the hospitality and travel industry in Malaysia right now? Okay. Hospitality and travel industry is a complement each other. Yes. Yeah. So we can see that this is the biggest contributor to our nation economic. Yes, that's true. Right? So, uh, what I can can say that 
as we see that a lot of tourists coming to Malaysia. Exactly. Every yeah. year it seems to Every increase. Every year they increase. Very and diverse also, markets yeah, very diverse as well. Because of our infra and the stability of our government. Right, yes. Uh, and also, of course, that our peace nations here. Yeah, that's right. So people come over here not just to enjoy the sun, the sea, the yeah. sand, but as well as all the shopping opportunities. Shopping opportunity, tourism, uh, sorry, the education industries, mm. and we also have a health tourism. That's right. The education tourism and also health tourism. So That's right. Yeah. So basically, you will happen to enjoy all of these yes. because you get all the customers. Mm. Okay, right. Now, could you tell me a little bit about for your hotel especially and resort hotels, yeah. what is the target market <coughs> for your customer base? Who's your typical guest? Corporate clients. Okay. Of course, that they coming for the team building, like right. I said just now. That's right. Yeah, and also the government okay yeah and they come to our resort because they they have a segmentation example okay. like east coast north side and also certain right yeah. okay. so we are in the east coast market okay and the government will do the east coast um, workshop in yes our so hotels. generally located yeah, over generally there located, yeah okay we provide understand. them the seminar facilities the ballrooms and of course um the the facility, uh, the services there. I see. So annually, Puaniani, you would say how many percentage of your customers or your guests are from the corporate or government base? Okay, basically the corporate we are targeted around forty percent. I see. Yeah. Okay. And the go and the government is around thirty percent. Yeah. All right. And so they basically the make up the bulk of yeah. your mm -hmm. guests. All right. And now what about the rest? The remainder would be uh, FIT ledgers, the in individual. People right. who come for holidays, we come up with a nice packages for one day stay, stay and relax in our resort. Right. And three days, two nights with the family. Right. Yeah. Okay. And also maybe for the couple, honeymooners and all that, we mm. come up with a very beautiful package. Definitely. Yeah. Resorts nearby are always the beach popular with the candlelight that. dinners and all that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay, and great. Now, um, tell me a little bit about uh, your perspective of, as we all know, the internet mm. is everything. Right. And 80% of, you know, um, <coughs> guest bookings as well as for hotels, be it for flights, even for travel, are made online these days. Exactly. So how does um, the hotel, the hospitality industry, how is it keeping up with this trend? Okay, we have a department who handle this reservation, online reservation. I see. So we control the rates and we also work closely with them with the online reservation. Right. And let's say we are running high occupancy, so we will definitely work with them closely, which room is available for that particular month. I you know, see. Let's say we are in the low season, like a monsoon season, any, right. we will do a, a very good rates with them and we will also um, visit them, I mean, to, to educate them that right. why uh, we have to promote this during this seasons. Right, so basically mm -hmm. you need a balanced yeah. occupancy. And also we, we keep track their records, you know, like example, their experience with us, you know. So we want to know what is the feedback. Right, so because of course. Because those, they, we don't have this online reservation, so we don't know what is the experience. So very important that we have to be on our toes that yes, our service enough. is delivered. And how about, uh, for example, online websites like TripAdvisor and etc., where yes. people actually mm -hmm. rate their experience? Exactly. So how does this help contribute? Is it an advantage? <coughs> is it a disadvantage? What's okay. your perspective? Most and foremost, that the service is very important. Of course. So, of course, that when we have a feedback, a good feedback is a very good for a hotel. Right. That, you know, it can promote to any other customer who wants to check in a hotel. Yes, true. Let's say they give us a, a bad experience. So, we have to reply their yes, experience. Yes, reply the and comment. And we apologize, and the comments, everything, you know. Exactly. So, we make sure that it will repeat again. Mm, true. It's a very important because... Uh, so it's a very use, useful measure yeah. of self-checking, basically. Self-checking, basically. Every day we have a department who check all the comments. I see. All yes. right. Wow, and that's then very we will do a morning briefing and we will brief it in the morning briefing. So every department will get to know uh, what is their... What was lacking. Uh, lacking. You what know? was done well. Yes, exactly. Like uh, right. they are not happy with anything like a food service, right. rooms and all that. So we will... On top of it, yeah. So on a day-to-day -day basis, day-to-day -day basis, rolls. yeah. All that right. is our day-to-day -day basis. Okay, and just out of curiosity, what is life like for a full-time staff mm -hmm. at a resort hotel? 
Okay, it's all about passions, you know. Okay. Yeah. So if you do love hospitality and meeting people, like we are the sales people, we have to meet people oh, every yes, day. Oh yes, on a constant yeah, basis. Yeah, on constant basis, we have to keep, you know, them like a friends. You yes, know, we of have course. to know what is. What is their expectations? You know, if That's you just right. want to get a sales for our resort, but at the end of the day, we can't deliver. True, it's a pointless. Exactly, you can't get the repeat business. Yes, true. So, so you need to make that point of are, contact yeah, point first. Yeah, point of contact first, and you have to groom your staff. You know, mm. to deliver after the confirmation. Right, true yeah. enough. So, so it has to live up to the expectations. Exactly, because we are also one of the customer when we go yes. travel. So. True we, enough. Yeah, so we have to to see their you know their services and all that. So we work extra mile from them or right. on top of them. Yeah. So basically, put yourself in the customer's shoes. Yes. Because eventually, in the customer's shoes. Eventually, you would go on holiday exactly, too. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Sometimes we go to the hotels and the check-in, the reservation is not there. Right. So how do you feel? So it same goes back to our hotel. So we have to true learn. enough. Yeah. Exactly. So uh -huh. everything needs to be on the ball. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Very interesting indeed. Now, tell me a little bit about how you think um, the managing of a resort hotel mm -hmm. is challenging. Okay. Um, both resort and hotel is challenging. Right. It's all come back to the teamwork and service. Right. right? Okay. So. The customer expectation, okay. They come to the resort, what their expectations, right? So sometimes you know, if we do not um, have that kind of facilities, true. So we have a problem facing to the group uh, coming to your resorts. So everything needs to be in order. Yes, in ready, order, ready all the time. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So what we'll do is we'll come back after the break, and when we're back from the break, we'll continue with Ponyani here in the studios. Do stay with us. Isu semasa dan terkini industri kreatif tanah air. Perkembangan muzik tempatan. Lensa anak seni. Aksi layar perak. Tanpa gosip dan sensasi. Semuanya disisipkan selama setengah jam dalam Teddy Sini bukan sekadar hiburan. Setiap Sabtu jam 12.30 tengah hari hanya di Bernama TV. Kavita, Meling dah set ke belum? Sikit je lagi puan. Apa menu kita hari ini? Semua menu sehat. Ikan bakar, so ayam, sayur-sayuran. Banyaklah. Puan, banyaknya guna minyak. Bahayakan kesihatanlah. Betul lah macam ni. Saya dah kurangkan separuh dia biasa ni. Cuba rasa ni. Sedap tak? Hmm. Biar kurang masin. Jangan lebih. Betul tu. Kita kena kurangkan minyak, gula, garam dan santan dalam masakan. Barulah ramai pelanggan datang ke kedai kita. Semua, Semua ni sihat belaka. Menyelami realiti. Menjejaki masa. Meninjau peristiwa. Paparan kronikal kembara kehidupan. Pelbagai keunikan juga pengalaman menarik. Segalanya disorotkan selama setengah jam dalam channel bernama setiap Ahad jam 9.30 malam hanya di Bernama TV. Welcome back to The Nation. You're here with me, Tamina Kausji, in our studios here at Banama today. And today I have in the studio with me, Ponyani from The Legend. Okay, so Ponyani, as we were talking about, so what are some of the challenges that you face managing a resort hotel? Okay, like I said that during, um, we have a few um, challenges like uh, right. seasons, monsoon seasons. That's right. So yeah. every monsoon season, what's the general expectation yeah. in the hotel industry? Okay. Um, our expectation, there will be a, a low period. Okay. So we have to create the packages. 
right yeah okay. for the family days for the um, team buildings and also for the FIT's leisures I see yes and also we can see that the the staff you right. know so we give them a training during the low period so we want them to have a good training so at least they can extend the service to the customers right. so this is uh, if you don't have a training in the in the hotels so we have a problem with the turnover staff right yeah because they don't know they don't have the vision and mission for the hotels so they might um, you know they are it going for another hotel easy for them yeah, to yeah easy, easy for them to go to another hotel example that maybe another hotel offer another better um, package, package and wise. salaries yeah right so that is the challenges for the resort hotel I think it's about the same for the city hotels so any hotel mm, in terms of the <coughs> In terms of the rates, right, we also have a challenge because a few hotels will, you know, offer and compete with the rates. But I don't believe in rates actually. I see. Because okay. if I don't, why not? Yeah, if I lower the rates, you know, we're gonna have a, uh, we're gonna have a problem too because we don't, we don't satisfy to the customer because we have a cost. Yes, so if lower the rates, true. yeah, we are, we are selling, we are pull down the rates and all that, and we also cannot give them a good service. True, because yeah, especially then able the quality. To your basic. Yeah, exactly. Right, right. So that's why we have our own strategy. So when 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 you ask me about the challenge of the managing resort hotels, um, we have a huge market actually. Yes, definitely. Yeah, Malaysia because, especially being yeah. such an international destination mm -hmm. these days. So it is sometime like uh, in the city. Um, they have a repeat customers, you know, because they are yes. doing it, like banks, uh, governments, and all that. They are doing. They come back to the same place. True, and if, also the yes. prospect of the flag prospect location, yeah. location. So they're nearer to it. Mm -hmm. But for the resort, you make sure that you have something that you can have. Uh, how you work with your partners. True, the pull factor has yeah, to be strong pull factors because strong. I mean, there's lots of uh, you know things like. <coughs> transport factors as well exactly. as location factors yeah we are monetary. also working with the airlines you know i see yeah, okay. we do package for the outbound i mean sorry for the inbound travel for the inbound travelers yeah. all yeah, right Malaysia airlines mass golden holidays you know with the malindo is coming to kuantan right so yes, that is good news yes definitely. it's a good news yeah yes, filipinos love malaysia mm, exactly they love beach yeah. yes definitely mm -hmm. all right now there are also i think hospitality industry wide in Malaysia so many hotels mushrooming everywhere yeah so how does an established <coughs> resort such as the legend actually stay competitive how do you stay on top how do you try to make up the difference yeah okay our department okay when we visit our customer right of course we discuss with them okay when when we know that what is their expectation so from there we will do our tactical action plans right so we will in, we will improve of course our facilities right yeah and of course that we are different from other hotels and we have like a example yeah like right. interacting um, we are the only resort we have a sports activities and beach activities ah i see yeah. all right and like pd they have so many hotels down there they have a lot of that's you know? true everything ah. is quite but well in balanced. legend charting resort we have a uh, atv that you can go for jungle trekking i see you know? okay so I, i'm sure that the family love to go there you have a beach and you have a forest yeah you know? so you've got a good so balance. you also have a banana boats right. you also can do a team buildings and team also a tally mesh nearby the beach right yeah okay so uh, we have to know our strength yes true. yeah and the opportunities of course so basically we, what your key points are the fact that you're able to afford all these extra facilities extra facilities right. for our clients yeah would mm -hmm. you say that having for and example sorry uh, before yes. i forget that we also work together closely with the local right you know, we give them the opportunity uh like uh, fireflies right okay at night mangrove have you been to mangrove yes i have yeah the one. okay yes. you love the niches and all that so we work together with the turtle century as well right. so this is all the package you know promote by the tourism Malaysia. right but we do it as a package okay like a batik printing and all that yes so basically so at the same time you're helping to revitalize and provide employment opportunities yes exactly in the local market mm -hmm.
Okay, wonderful. Yeah. All right. So as I was going to ask, <coughs> um, being a hotelier who has got a lot of experience, what would you say are the core values that oh, yeah. need to be established within especially young staff, for mm -hmm. example? I hold on to seven core values. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I want to share with all the viewers that number one, the very important is honesty and integrity. All right. In what context for hospitality? Hospitality as what like people come in and check in, you know, housekeeping, or so maybe they saw some values, things, valuable, items, valuable items and all that, you know, they will pass it to the lost and found. Right. And the guests will be happy to come back to your hotel because you have the honesty yes. and integrity. Yes, you expect that amount yes. of, you know, mm -hmm. level security. Yeah. Number two, uh, the core values that are, is uh, responsibility. Okay. Yeah, you are responsibility to deliver the food, the service and all that. Right. Number three is a discipline. Yes, you take charge you of take yourself. Char yeah, you take charge of yourself. It's discipline. Number four is um, teamwork. Right. Yeah, you have to work a teamwork as a front office, FMB, and also sales department deliver the sales, and all the department have to be in a teamwork. Right. I mean, yeah. nobody can From function independently. Yeah, right? we are like a family. So we have to work a teamwork. Cannot blame each other. There's no more blaming culture. Ah, very right? true. Something and you have And also, to um, the teamwork and also the uh, vision. Okay. So you must have the vision. Every staff, you must have the vision. If you don't have the vision, you will, you will go far. I mean, you won't go far. Right. Maybe your, your, your GM will be, your owner company is vision like that. Right. But your star will be vision go the other area and this one go here. Right. You Everybody you needs to be in harmony. Everybody is, should be have the same vision and mission. Right. And the last one is a fairness. Okay. It's a very important the fairness that how you are the cleaner or you are the housekeeping, you are the boss, you are the manager, you have to be fair. Yes, indeed. So that everybody has a good yes, working atmosphere. Good working atmosphere. That's the seven core values that I hold on to. Yeah. And That's you right. can work happily. I think it must be particularly challenging <coughs> to be a part of, I think, a resort mm -hmm. hotel because you are, uh, how many of your staff are, in that sense, working away from home? Okay. Um, most of the staff are locals there. All right. Okay. So, but for those who are from outside, right. we provide them a quarters. I see. So okay. at least they can go back to their place and relax. They don't have to, you know, when they have a holiday, they will go back to their hometown. That's right. So it's maybe um, most of them are locals or so maybe head of department and a few uh, supervisor levels. Right. So, so they are from mm -mm, outstation they are from maybe. from outstation maybe. Okay. Yes. What would you say is, because I'm sure you <coughs> intimately know the staff, yeah. How? what would you say are the challenges for these staff, let's say outstation people who decide to take on hospitality but in a resort hotel? Okay. Um, Basically, for the newcomers, for the ho hospitality industry, right? Maybe uh, they feel scared, you know, because okay. because they're going to another place to work. That's true. Example like me when I started with Genting Highland Resort. Okay. Even though it's my hometown, it's new for me. All right. Right. So the important thing we should have the orientation, mm, which okay. is in our HR department will provide them to do the orientation make sure that they are understand what is the culture that we have in the hotel industry. I mean that what is the standard operating procedures and who is they are working with. Right. Which department. And right. the SOP and everything. And SOP everything. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So basically from what I can make out, so working especially at a resort hotel is a little bit like being a part of an extended exactly. family. Exactly. Yes. All right. I work in the hotel before and I work in the resort. Yes. Right. I love resorts okay. or maybe because yeah I love nature right yes. yeah definitely a benefit mm -hmm. okay now from your perspective um, how do Malaysian city hotels and resorts uh, manage to remain the top priority for tourists what does Malaysia have to <coughs> offer which you think is something uncommon in the region um, from my own uh, honest opinion that right the city hotels and the resort. Actually, it is uh, a lot of opportunity for the tourists to explore their holidays here. Right. Right. They can stay shopping in Kuala Lumpur right. or in any city and they can relax to the resorts. Right. So yeah. basically, we've got the best of everything. Yeah, we got the best of everything. All right. Especially. Okay. So thank you so much for being with us You're here welcome. in the studio today.
Ponyani, and we will be back shortly once the break is done. So stay with us because we're coming back with Miss Premila, who is another hospitality industry veteran, to speak about her experience from a city hotel perspective. Stay with us. Pirsa, salam dari Jakarta. Sebuah program kerjasama kantor berita Indonesia antara dengan kantor berita Malaysia bernama kembali hadir menjumpai Anda. Sedar tak kita tuan-tuan dan puan-puan keadaan iklim yang tak menentu sekarang ni? Perubahan iklim meningkatkan kejadian kemarau, jerebu, banjir dan ia menyumbang kepada perubahan iklim yang berlaku secara drastik. Inilah dia faktor-faktornya. Yang pertama, asap dari kenderaan. Yang kedua, penerbangan dan pembakaran hutan. Yang ketiga, pembebasan asap dari industri perkilangan. Dan yang keempat, pelupusan sisa buangan. Haa... Ah. Ini usaha yang Pak Abu buat iaitu yang pertama menanam pokok, yang kedua mengurangkan atau tidak menggunakan beg plastik, yang ketiga mengasingkan bahan buangan, yang keempat mengita semula bahan buangan dan yang kelima memilih barangan dari bahan kita semula. Ada banyak lagi usaha yang boleh kita lakukan antaranya kurangkan pemanduan kereta persendirian dan banyakkan penggunaan kenderaan awam. Anda adalah sebahagian daripada penyelesaiannya. Nongkah batasan masa. Mengupas isu semasa. Jadi saluran pelbagai suara. Segalanya baru dan benar di Berita Bernama TV. Welcome back to The Nation. You're here with me, Tamina Kausji. And in our studios today, we have with us some experts from the hospitality industry in Malaysia. And now I'd like to introduce you to Miss Premila, Director of Sales from the Grand Seasons KL. Hello. Hello. Welcome to the studio, Miss Premila. Thank you. Thanks for being with us here today. Okay. All right. So I'm sure our audience are curious as well. What are the differences between um, a city hotel and a resort hotel? We covered what a resort hotel was just now. Tell us essentially what is a city hotel? Okay. Because that's your specialty. Yes, true. City hotel we actually cater for business travelers. Right. Okay? Business travelers within Malaysia and internationally. And okay. then we actually do conferences and I meetings see. as well. Huge right. conferences and incentive group from overseas. Okay, mm. right. So tell us a little bit about your background in the hospitality industry itself. Okay, I started off as a secretary. Okay. okay. And I have the opportunity to meet a lot of people. Right. And then with my uh, persistence and my passion towards the industry that uh, lead me to sales and marketing. I was right. given an opportunity to join sales and marketing. So right. it was a golden opportunity. So I make use of the opportunity to be where am I today. Right, mm. okay. So sales and marketing, mm. what would you say is um, the, the most challenging part of it, especially in relation to city hotels? Okay. I mean, there are so many, the options are infinite, especially in the city itself. Resort hotels, for example, people might, you know, have a preference for an island, for example, Correct. but the city is the city. So how does a city hotel stand up to the challenges? Of course, city hotels have a lot of challenges. As you know, there's so many new hotels, upcoming new hotels That's in the right. city. And as okay. an established hotel, what do you do? Okay, for us, um, since I'm the director of sales, um, our, my main objective is to study the market and right. the client need as well. So we have to come up with our um, 
marketing plan to suit the organization um, requirement. Right. Uh, and then we will, every organization have their own plan and marketing strategy as well. I see. So we will execute accordingly. Right. Mm. Okay. So each year you have a different marketing plan. Yes. I see. All right. Now, what can you comment about the hospitality as well as travel industry within Malaysia itself? It's a oh. young industry still. All right. Hospitality and um, um, is actually complement each other in Malaysia. That's especially. right. Especially, uh, of course, um, this is one of the main uh, contribution. One of the main contribution to the nation. Right, okay. economy wise, economic wise right. and of our nation stability, that a lot of we have influx of inbound tourism coming to Malaysia. That's right. I think it's been increasing, especially exactly. in the past. Exactly, it's decade. a rapid growth to Malaysia That's industry. Right. Okay. okay, so what's your opinion about managing a hotel that is located in the heart of the city? Okay, we have a lot of advantage in the heart of the city. I would give Grand Season as one of the examples since I'm actually working in Grand yes, Season Hotel. We have the highest room inventory okay, right. and the large ballroom capacity that can accommodate 1,500 packs. Right. So we have advantage to cater for big groups, conference and overseas incentive group. Right, mm. true. So outside from that, you can also hold lots of different private events, Exactly, for and we have about 21 uh, meeting rooms. I see. Mm. Okay, fantastic indeed. Now, how about from your experience, mm -hmm. what is the competitive edge that you need to have when you manage a city hotel? Of course, the rate is the main factor. All right, the okay. rates. So everybody is actually coming up with the rates, uh, very attractive rates. So True my, enough. Uh, my job function is to identify the potential company and to come up with special package. Right. Sometimes the rate, there's always a hidden agenda. So okay. I come up with the rates and I have actually put a lot of benefits. For example, the room rates come with breakfast, come right. with transportation, okay. come essential to, essential to an city. internet, internet uh, complimentary internet as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's wonderful because actually certain hotels these days, they don't actually offer the complimentary internet service exactly. anymore. Exactly. So okay. that's how we actually come up with the marketing plan to cater, to capture the market actually, especially the corporate market. Right, the corporate mm. market. So talking about the markets especially, mm -hmm. tell us about uh, your target market for your customer base okay. in a city hotel. In the city hotel, of course, our main target is actually corporate market because corporate. they actually con uh, they contribute um, more room nights in terms of their conference, meetings. Right. Okay. And then we have a government as well. They also contribute in terms of their meetings, seminars. Yes, that's okay. right. Training and session. then we have travel agent. Travel agent actually contribute in terms of um, um, leisure market because okay. we need to manage the demand and supply of the room. Right. As a city hotel, we need to manage that. So during weekdays, we have all the uh, corporate groups, the government groups, you know. Yes, because to it's working hours. Yes, as working well. hours. So for the weekend, we need the travel agent market. That's how they come right. in for the inbound market. I see. Mm. Okay. So what would you say is the proportion of corporate clients as well as, you know, government customers as well okay the difference is about 20 to 30 percent right for each market segment okay. okay so basically it's nicely rounded yes okay now what do you have to say about the online market i mean online bookings are all the rage now and it's not something that's going to die down Correct. everybody just you know you, you log in onto your favorite hotel's website or you look for a hotel that gives you the best prices true okay online booking i would say is like a market share okay okay a market should, share yes you should take the opportunity when you're running low occupancy you should book online because when we're right. running low occupancy we come up with a very attractive package okay. right okay so I would suggest to all the viewers out there to take this opportunity to book online. Right, so mm. it's a little bit like booking flights. Exactly. Let's say you book early so you get the best exactly. price. Exactly, early bird promotion. We have so many promotion on online. It's all depend on the um, demand and supply of the rooms as well. If you are running high occupancy, of course, the rate will be higher. When we are running low occupancy, we'll come up with attractive packages. Right, mm. okay. So let's say for the year 2015, this calendar year, what are some of the you know targeted high seasons that you're looking at 
okay for city hotel we are not like resort resort normally is weekend school holiday is the um the yes, target the market target, the primary okay, okay. Yes. for real city hotel is all year round that mm -hmm. is we all depending solely on the meeting in terms of corporate businesses and right. incentive from overseas as well right so we actually work with tourism malaysia to promote our product internationally and locally I see. Mm. Okay. So I suppose because in conjunction with Tourism Malaysia, for example, the grand sale that happens yes. at least a couple of times, so that would attract more people into the city? Yes, true. All right. Okay. Very interesting. Now, let's see. What would you say is the prospect for the hospitality and travel industry mm -hmm. in Malaysia in okay. 2015 from okay. a sales perspective? Okay. I can see there's a rapid growth um, in Malaysia, especially we have different targets. Um, segmentation that we have to look into it. We have medical tourism. Okay, that, as medical you can see, tourism. we have a lot of hospital in Malaysia. That's that, right. Know, and our um, services is very reasonable, so you can actually bring a lot of foreigners coming to Malaysia. Right. So that is one of the income as well for tourism. So do you actually work in collaboration with medical yes. centers, for example? Yes, we, have. we work with General Hospital, we work right. with uh, IJN and all the private okay. uh, hospital, KPJ and all this. I see. Mm. Okay, all right. So that's one of it. And yes. yes. And of course, um, we have um, university in Malaysia as well. You can see rapid growth of um, uh, university in Malaysia that we have a lot of foreign students coming to Malaysia. Yes, the education sector. And yes, so and we have a demand for room as well. When they come to Malaysia, they require for rooms accommodation right. and grand season be able to actually accommodate. Yes, mm. especially when they come in for the surveying period. Exactly. Okay. So perhaps it's families, parents with their teenage children yes. and etc. Okay, all mm. right. So it's very interesting indeed that there are so many new vistas opening up within the hospitality industry. Now, what would you say is the biggest challenge to staying competitive in this sort of a situation, in this sort of atmosphere? Of course, the biggest challenge, I would say, is a human capital. Okay. okay, human of capital. Human capital, of okay. course, you know. We are talking about hospitality industry, it's all about service. Yes, indeed. Okay, right. So, service is a very important aspect. Therefore, I mean, I would say like Grand Season have a track record of long service um, staff working. I see, okay. Working with us, so, they be able to actually sustain our client and acquire new client. That is very important to sustain the client. Yes, because of course. when they come to the hotel, our staff will know how to handle them with care. You know, sometimes they come, they feel like at home because they already know their right. requirement. Mm -hmm. um, we have express checking counter for them, you know, for our um, repeat client. Right. So they feel um, comfortable. So to truly like a regular. Yeah, exactly. And not only in terms of rooms, but, you know, in terms of FMB, our FMB people know what kind of food to offer to them. Right. They um, know what their favorites exactly. are. Exactly. Like us, you know, when people give us that kind of treatment, we are so happy. True. Same mm. way, in a sense, when people go to their favorite mamak, why do they exactly. go there? He knows your order. It's true. Okay. All right. Now, being a hotelier who mm. has had so many years of experience within mm. the hospitality industry, what would you say are some of the core values that you think, especially newcomers, mm -hmm. should have? Okay. Core values, I would say, your passion towards your job. That is very important. If right. you don't have your passion, you're unable to sustain any job. Yes, true enough. Uh, so, of course, a lot of people coming to the hospitality industry, they think it's like it's a glamorous kind of industry. Right. Okay. So you have to sacrifice in terms of your long working hours because it's a service industry. Yes, indeed. We have different shifts, like we have morning shift, afternoon shift, and night shift. Right. What time? Mm. Tell us a little bit about this, just for the viewers mm. um, out there, because also we're trying to give a mm. holistic sort of view about what is it like to work in the hospitality industry. Yeah. What time does the morning shift? start okay the morning shift uh, start from seven o'clock right okay to three o'clock okay okay and then followed by the afternoon shift three to eleven three to eleven and then eleven to seven I see uh -huh. all right so basically mm. there are three main shifts yes. and there might be individuals within the mm. system who actually work double shifts regularly exactly all right so that's where we're talking mm. about the passion yes okay you've been great but we'll come back once the break is over and we'll continue with a little bit more about the hospitality industry here in Malaysia stay with us
kasih. Terima kasih. Sama-sama. Sama-sama. Sama-sama Saluran pelbagai suara Segalanya baru dan benar Di Berita Bernama TV Welcome back to the studio You're here with me Tamina Kauzji For The Nation And we have with us today Miss Premila from Grand Seasons Hotel all right, Ms. Premila. So as you were saying, what are some of the core values that one must have to be a success in the hospitality industry? Okay. Discipline is a, is a very important, okay, right. in order for you to be successful because you have to follow on t timing is a very important in this industry because you are dealing with guests. That's oh. right. So okay. guests need you 24-7, Exactly. You can't afford to be late to work and all this. So that is very important. Discipline, your passion, hard work is right. very important in this hospitality industry, I would say. Right. If people have all this qualification, there's a lot of opportunity for the young upcoming hoteliers, I would say. Ah, I see. Mm. Right. So basically, let's say if I'm a recent SPM graduate, mm -hmm. for example, and I have dreams of working in the hospitality industry, mm. what do I do? What are the basic qualifications? The basic are there any? The basic qualification is after SPM World 2. Okay. Right. You can actually start as a junior um, staff and then from there you progress because there's a lot of colleges, hospitality colleges that you can actually learn right. to study. So before, I mean because in hospitality industry we have different department, not right. just services and marketing. Yes, okay. true. So tell us a little bit about that because um, not everybody is suited or has the disposition to succeed in sales. Exactly. You right. know, it's all depending on their passion. Yes. So we have actually accounts department. Okay. You know, we, we require accountant. Yes, of course. Engineering, engineering department, technician. Right. Uh, yes. So a lot of people don't know. And of course, chef as well, people who got inspired to cook and all this, they want to right. you know go into um, this department yes. also they can it's all depending on the individual what is their passion of right. course front office yes front and of then house etc. reservation and fmb as well okay mm. now which would you say is the most um challenging department to oversee as sales Director. The most challenging department is actually sales and marketing Itself. because yes, because we are the income generator for the for the hotel. Right. Okay. okay. So tell me what a typical day in your life looks like at work. 
Okay, I have to wake up early in the morning. You know, I have to make right. sure I'll be on time. I have to do research on our competitor activities. I know, how I'm going to overcome in terms of the occupancy and so on. So it's a very challenging. Not only is a marketing, but I have to actually deal with other department as well. Right. Okay. Because since I'm marketing, we actually generating business, but of course we need um you need the support feedback. support from other department in right. terms of housekeeping. We need them to clean the room. We exactly. Need Everything reservation has to be on time. front office so all these people are very important um, uh, department right for the hotel so in a sense you truly are like a coordinator exactly an overall coordinator true all right so what time does your day typically start and finish okay for season marketing normally by eight o'clock in the morning you'll be in the office and right. then you know the latest by ten o'clock Right, mm, okay. okay. So typically a 14, 16 exactly. hour shift. Exactly. Okay. Mm -hmm. And does it get uh, how much worse or better does it get during the high season? High season, um, of course, in terms of high season, I would say the um, the service staff actually will get affected because they actually have to um, do in terms Put of in cleaning, cleaning yes. um, the rooms and FMB in terms of the turnover of the uh, foods and all this. Right. Okay. For sales and marketing, because we already occupy in terms of room occupancy, exactly. So um, the so front liners goes, uh, up. goes to them. Right. Mm. When okay. we are running low occupancy, that's how the sales and marketing have to, you know, yes, put so you have lot to hit of it harder. extra. Mm. Right, a lot of extra mm. effort. Exactly. Okay, so you've got the long hours, mm. you've got the stress of meeting all your targets and exactly. deadlines. So what keeps you going? My passion. Okay. Okay. Meeting up with client is actually the most um, because you meet people from different level of uh, you know right. of life. Yes, exactly. So you never know, know who's going to walk exactly. in. Exactly. You know, sometimes they are the one who actually um, give us that kind of um, um, passion to us. You know. Right. Uh, True. So. And also, there's al always a factor of you make people happy when exactly. you serve them. Exactly. You know, sometimes you come to your hotel, it's not because of that, they because of you, because they like your service. True enough, true yeah. enough. I'm sure you are a regular guest, they've got their favorite servers, exactly. their favorite people who are in the front of house and exactly. etc. Exactly. So right. when they call in, we already know their requirement and we have given them the express check-in counter for them. Right. So this is actually very important, especially for the corporate market, okay? Right. They are actually uh, always fast moving, so we must really look into their Yes, you needs. need to keep up with exactly. them. Exactly. And with our long service uh, staff, they really know how to actually um, sustain or retain our guests. Right. Uh, yes. I have to say the credit goes to the um, the frontliner as well because they are actually working very hard to yes, you know they're the um, face of the hotel exactly to retain our guests. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So basically, hospitality is an mm. industry filled with challenges, but exactly. at the same time, the satisfaction is true. Job satisfaction is very key. important. Right. Right. Okay. Now Malaysia, of course, we've mm. got the famous tagline Malaysia truly Asia okay now how do you think the hospitality industry in Malaysia helps to promote Malaysia as not only a destination but mm. as the essence of what is good about Asian hospitality of course it start from our service as well the right. way we greet our client right okay and the food as well we actually trying to actually um, promote our food for example our FMB every month we come up with different dishes from different state from Kedah right. from Penang oh, we come I up see. with that kind of food promotion okay. so they can actually try the food and mm. then for the rooms accommodation we try to um, give some of the Asian kind of um, a decoration, I would say, like batik printing, that kind of atmosphere for right. in terms of rooms accommodation. So it has a genuine warm sort of exactly. feel. Exactly. And of course, we have to promote our local fruits. So, you know, rather than we give imported fruits like apple and orange, we right. change to our local fruits for our fruit basket to oh promote right, okay. the food as well. Star fruit example. Exactly. Okay, mm. okay. Yeah, well, that's a good way to integrate what is local and what exactly. is best about Malaysia. All right. Mm. Now, what would you say are some of the biggest um, challenges mm -hmm. in maintaining your standing as a city hotel? Okay, the biggest challenges, of course, um, I would say, um, 
the rates, okay, right. because new competitors, they actually giving a very good rate, but that is all short term basis, right. okay, yes. when they're coming out with introductory rates and all these, they, you know, they come out with good rates, but the most important is how to retain your guests and sustain, you know, your business right. is that, I would say service, we go extra miles, right, to so sustain. that will actually, because like Ponyani was saying mm. earlier, you can't, cut down your rates below exactly. a baseline. So we actually give the rates, but we actually give benefit perks, you know, upgrading right. the rooms, you know, like our regular guests coming, you know, we upgrade them to suite rooms. Right. Uh, so that kind of, um, you know, extra miles that we go, so they feel good and they will come back to us again. Mm, that's mm. true, of course, how in the service repeat. industry. Yes. And how about, like, as you were saying, of mm. course, service being key, mm. what are the type of programs that you run, for example, to train your staff? so that they are prepared to take on not only the Malaysian level of mm. hospitality that's expected, but an international standard. Yes, of course, human capital is very important in hospitality industry because it's a service-related um, industry. Therefore, our HR department have a lot of training, okay? right. um, internal uh, training and external training as I well. See. Okay, We have training in terms of service, in terms of, you know, sometimes we need a bond as well within the colleague. We will have team building activities right. uh, to have a better working environment, I would say, ah, because it's okay. all about teamwork. Right. Mm. Well, the to same way in which corporate clients come in to do team building, exactly. you have the same. Exactly. Right. So we have a lot of trainings, all upcoming trainings in terms of service, in terms of our approach and all this. Right. Mm. So this is something that is an ongoing, ongoing. effort throughout the year. Mm. All right. Okay, now, just to finish up and end up, what is your advice mm -hmm. for all the aspiring young hoteliers out there or even somebody out mm -hmm. there who might be listening and might just be considering a career change into hospitality? Okay, I would say there's a lot of great opportunity in the hospitality industry. It's all about your passion, what kind of job that you like to actually um, to join because there's so many um, different departments. Different different department. yes, it's all depending right. on individual, what is their passion. Some people, they like the front office, they can actually you know join the front office right. or they can actually join the food and beverage if they have the passion for food. That's right. So mm. let's say if you love interacting mm. with people, sales would be a good option. Exactly. As well as front of house. Yes. Let's say if mm. you have a passion for food and beverage, and mm. then it would be nicer to be behind the scenes. Maybe exactly. you could start from banquet staff, mm. go all the way up to chef and etc. Yes. Right. Mm. Okay. So now what about people who are, I think we currently have mm. almost a deluge, a flood mm. of hospitality graduates. Mm -hmm. So they, ha they are the ones who finish like of an entire four year bachelor's degree. Mm. So what are their prospects within the hospitality industry? Okay, there's a lot of prospect in the hospitality industry, but they must be passionate about the job, as I said, because it's not easy, though, in the hospitality right. industry. You have to sacrifice your time. Yes. Okay, you can't actually go back sharp on the dot. So True. you have to do extra mile. So a lot of the young people, you know, they can't actually um, take the, right. uh, the long working hours, I would say. But so as long as you keep that in mind, exactly. and you come in with a smile on a daily basis, it exactly. makes your job easier. Exactly. That's All what right. I would say because, you know, there's a lot of opportunity. Right. Mm. Okay. So thank you so much for being with us on the show, Ms. Premila. Thank you all very right. much. And we have been talking about hospitality as well as all the opportunities mm. within the Malaysian market on today's episode of The Nation. Thank you so much for being with us. We'll join you again next time. Bye-bye.